Shipping activity in polar regions is set to grow over the coming years. Receding sea ice is opening up these regions to both commercial shipping and tourism. Many people ask, why can't we just leave these areas alone? But we can't turn back a rising tide. So the real issue is not whether this activity is a good thing, it's how do we manage it so that we protect the environment and safeguard the lives of people who live and work in such a remote arena. The Ocean Diamond is an expedition ship that brings eco-tourists to Antarctica. They're drawn by the breathtaking quality of the landscape, the chance to encounter some unique wildlife, and by the sheer majesty of the glaciers and the icebergs. For most of them, it's quite literally the trip of a lifetime. But for the Ocean Diamond's captain Oleg Klaptenko, it's the ultimate test of his ship and his skills as a professional seafarer. Here, I can tell you several uh, sources of danger what we have here. It is uh, low temperature, it is uh, bad visibility, uh, very long uh, polar night and polar day. It is remoteness from uh, our home and from uh, any closest uh, human facility who can help you. It is uh, also lack of uh, uh, good and accurate and complete hydrographic service. With more and more ships navigating in polar waters, IMO has addressed international concern about the protection of the polar environment and the safety of seafarers and passengers by introducing new regulations that all ships operating in these harsh and challenging waters must comply with. The Polar Code entered into force on the 1st of January 2017. It sets out mandatory standards that cover the full range of design, construction, equipment, operational, training and environmental protection matters that apply to ships operating in the inhospitable waters surrounding the two poles. So let's see what it means aboard the Ocean Diamond. Here we are on the bridge of the ship which is the navigational heart of the vessel. This is where voyage planning takes place. Now voyage planning is an important part of any mission, but in polar waters it's particularly important because of the variable factors, particularly the ice and the weather. All ships operating in polar waters must have the ability to receive accurate, up-to-date information about the state of the ice and the state of the weather, and that is fed into the voyage plan. Most ships rely on a satellite system for their distress and safety communications. But in polar waters, the coverage isn't always ideal. So it's important for ships operating in polar waters to have other means of communication as well. That's something that's inherent in the polar code. One of the particular challenges of navigation in polar waters is the lack of accurate hydrographic services. This means that the charts aren't always as accurate or as complete as they are in other areas. When your car windscreen freezes over in winter, it's a fairly easy job to nip outside and scrape the ice off. It's not so easy on a ship. So on this vessel, they can pour hot water on the outside of the windows to melt all the ice. And this is a heated panel to ensure the visibility remains perfect. While navigation is a key aspect of polar shipping safety, the polar code covers a great deal more. Here you can see the lifeboats. Now obviously, you hope that you're never going to have to abandon ship and take to the lifeboats. But when you do, if you do, you need to know that you can be properly protected. In polar waters, all the lifeboats have to be fully enclosed. And on board, they have to carry certain items of equipment, not just to be able to communicate, but also so that the passengers who have to evacuate can be thermally protected. There's suits on board there and there's other pieces of equipment to keep them warm. And outside the warmth of the enclosed ship's bridge, there's one key factor that you simply cannot ignore. The one obvious thing about polar conditions is it's cold and you need to keep warm. If you have to abandon ship, 
You're not going to last long if you go into the water, maybe five minutes at the most. So on board this ship, thermal protection is absolutely key. Now, one of these suits is available for every passenger in their cabin. There's another suit available for every cabin, uh, passenger in the lifeboat as well. And we'll have a quick demonstration now of how quick and easy it is to put the suit on and how warm it's going to keep you. Extreme cold may reduce the effectiveness of numerous components of the ship, including deck machinery and emergency equipment. We're here on the after deck now, and I'm surrounded by firefighting equipment. It's just the kind of stuff you would expect to see. We've got an extinguisher, we've got hose, we've got protective clothing, we've got breathing apparatus and so on. But the key thing about the Polar Code is that all this equipment has to be stored somewhere that's warm to ensure that it's ready for use instantly. We're in the Antarctic summer now, and it's a balmy zero degrees, but the weather and the conditions can change instantly. Ice buildup is a real problem for ships operating in these areas. It can add weight to the top sides and it can prevent deck machinery from working properly. So a key requirement of the Polar Code is that there must be equipment available to get rid of ice from machinery and from the ship itself. It doesn't have to be sophisticated, these will do the job. The Polar Code has two main sections. One deals with the safety of the ship and personnel, and the other with protecting the environment. Ships are already subject to strict environmental regulations under the MARPOL Convention, but the Polar Code adds another level. Discharging oil or oily mixtures into the sea, for example, is strictly prohibited under the Polar Code. And all oil tankers must have double hull and double bottom construction to prevent oil spills in case of an accident. Strict rules also apply to dumping animal carcasses and food waste. We're here in the galley of the ship now, where a dedicated team of chefs, cooks and helpers cater for more than 200 people every day, ravenous tourists and hungry crew. Now that generates a lot of waste. Food waste, paper and plastic waste. None of this is allowed to be discharged into the sea or put overboard. It all has to be bagged up and taken ashore. Although Ocean Diamond operates a no dumping policy, the Polar Code does permit food waste to be discharged overboard, but only under certain strict conditions. The Polar Code deals extensively with technical topics, but it also deals with personnel matters too. Navigating in polar waters places special challenges on the crew themselves. So they have to be experienced, they have to be knowledgeable, and according to the Polar Code, they have to have special training as well to operate ships in these areas. Captain Klaptenko has been sailing in polar waters for 25 years and he clearly recognises the value of specialist training. Due to Polar Code, uh, all crew members as uh, senior officer, as uh, raids, they have to pass special uh, education, tests and certificates. They have to be certified for and get permission for sailing in polar waters. And I agree with this. And it's important to remember that the Polar Code goes above and beyond existing IMO requirements such as MARPOL and SOLAS. All the extensive safety and environmental regulations included in these and other IMO conventions still apply to shipping in polar waters. People say the polar regions are probably the last great wilderness area of this planet. But today that's beginning to change. And we're seeing increased maritime traffic, more and more ships coming into these regions. In the north, it's driven by commercial imperatives. And here in the Antarctic, there are more and more tourist vessels coming. Now you can debate whether or not such vessels should be allowed to come in these areas. But one thing everyone agrees on, if they're going to come, the ships should be safe, the people aboard them should be protected 
and their impact on the environment should be as small as possible. And that is where IMO's Polar Code comes in.